Hey guys, Mike here. So, oh boy, what another red day in the market. And so, you know, I guess what we got to figure out is, is this a capitulation moment for the market? The bears finally using that trap door, as Cam Carson was talking about, to push the market down in that short window. That's what we got to find out, you know. And so, we'll see if this continues the pressure or not. And when we get into the charts, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. As when you think about what I said yesterday, for those who watched it, you probably are not surprised about what happened today, right? Because when certain levels get broke, Man, watch out below. And that's what happened today. Now, I will say, you know, like I told the members, I just put out a video for them on this. It's like, is anybody surprised? Like, put in the comments, how could you be surprised if, if you watch this channel? I don't know how you'd be surprised because we talked about this well in advance when it comes to September, right? I mean, it's the worst month for stocks. And again, I always tell people, that's the whole point of this channel. Put that in your diary. Put that in your phone. Mark it. Say, ooh, September's coming up. It's the worst month of the year historically. That's the way it is, right? And again, the reason why I show interviews that certain people do, like a Tom Lee, for example, who he has been hot all year, whether he's been guessing, who knows, right? But since October, he was good to go. And I said, let's see if he passes the hot potato to somebody else because he's been dead wrong on this call, right? And that's somebody with a lot of resources behind his back. And if his clients were mad at him, like he said before September, if they finally followed him in to the market in September, I guess they're pretty upset right now, right? But they're even more upset, I should say, and he's getting even less sleep. But, you know, it just shows, you know, even people who have been hot, tons of resources can be wrong. So if you're making a bad call or something, don't be upset about it, you know, because if you're like me and you're a one man show, uh, imagine if you had all those resources. Right. So if they can get it wrong, anybody can get stuff wrong. Just remember that. And also remember, September, worst month of the year. We will come into what's considered strong seasonality coming up here soon. Okay, so keep that in mind uh, as we get through this. Just when you're going through times like this, pan out on the charts, look at it. So, okay, we're still in a long term uptrend, but we're in a short term downtrend right now. Let's see if that gets worse. Now, remember what John, John Powell said yesterday? The one line really was we still need to see some softening in the labor market. Well, what did you not see today? And by the way, I'm going to cover this. But then I'm going to gripe about something, and I made no apologies about it, just FYI. Now, initial jobless claims came out, and you can see like he's wanted to heat up right, or get softer, right? But actually, you can see they dropped. They came in below expectations. And when you look at this, they've been decreasing, right, the initial jobless claims. That's pretty much not what he wants to see. And then you look at continuous jobless claims. Again, you're kind of seeing the same thing where, and really since the beginning of 2023, this number keeps getting smaller and smaller for continuous jobless claims. A lot of people came back into the workforce and everything. And so that's not what he wants to see. Now, quick gripe on this, and, and I'm not going to apologize for griping about this because I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, and it's just the way it is. Like, my wife and I, obviously she comes from a family of farmers. You know, I come from a poor family. So it's one of those things, like, no matter how high we go through the tax brackets, like, we never forget where we come from. And just because we benefit from the system, it doesn't mean it's the right system. It doesn't mean the system's correct, right? It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a broken system like crazy. And we're benefiting from it. And I'm sure a lot of you are as well. But there's so many, I mean, I mean, millions upon millions of people that aren't, right? And the one thing that just, is, just drives me crazy, and I don't know how people don't get more upset about this, is this executive pay we see has happened and how much has grown over the last 30 years. But I saw this interview just fire me up, the, the Ford CEO. Listen to this real quick. You've seen a 34% pay increase in your salary. You make almost $30 million. Why should your workers not get the same type of pay increases that you're getting leading the company? Well, if you look at uh, compensation, my compensation, 92% of it is based on performance of the company. But if you're getting a 34% pay increase over four years and you're offering 20% to employees right now, do you think that's fair? And so, you know, there really is no defense for her income or whatever, because understand back in like the 70s, it was like, what was it, 20 or 30 to 1, CEO pay to regular pay. It's uh, almost 400 to 1 right now. Like that is insane. It, it's it's unbelievable how much it's gone up. Used to to actually be a billionaire, you had to actually go out and start a company. You had to risk it all, right? Like Elon or Warren Buffett or any of the rest of them. You had to go out and do something. Now you don't have to be. You see, I mean, even like the Bear Stearns guy who ran the company in the ground in eight years, he made like half a billion. You know, imagine if he'd have stayed. And so it's just crazy to me how much not just the CEOs, but executives below them make now versus. They're employees. I'm not sitting here, you know, saying, and again, I'm not going to get into that whole thing with the Ford thing. I'm trying to stay on my topic here. And if you look at this, I mean, just look at this right here. This right here 
is the top 1% and how much their net worth has grown, right? Versus the bottom 50%. Can you even see the bottom 50% on there? I mean, it's insane. Look at that. It's not even close, right? And then when you go over here, you can see the top 10%, which most of us are in, on 70% of the U.S. wealth. Top 10%. But it just shows the system it is unbelievable. And it's really unforgiving more than anything else. And if you're wondering, you may think, well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm rolling in it. Let me tell you something. This system is so broken that what do you, if you had to guess, what do you think income wise as a single individual and then as a married couple you would have to make to actually consider middle class? I, I got to know because when I saw this data, I was like, there's no way. Wasn't even close to my mind to think of this. So put it in the comments. What do you think? Single individual, what do you got to make to be considered middle class? And then as a couple, what do you have to make? That is my question to you. All right. And let's see if these numbers come close to what you were thinking. If you look right here, the average single person, right? If you make $26,000, you are considered middle class. If you make $36,902, you're considered middle class. This is the average because like in Alabama, Mississippi, it's going to be much lower, right? California, New York's going to be much higher, okay? And then as a family of four, $52,000. And guys, if you get anything out of this, please hit that like button. It helps people find this video. And if you like the content, think about hitting that subscribe button down in the bottom. And please tell me those numbers aren't what you would think. Because I know they were nowhere near what I was thinking as far as what was going to start you at middle class. And I don't know how a family of four is going to be the bottom range. What is it? 52,000? You got to be out your mind. A family of four in this country? That, that's crazy. Even if you're talking about Alabama, Mississippi, one of those states or whatever it is. You know, but again... I'm sure you're benefiting from the system. We're benefiting from the system. That's great and everything. But again, don't forget where you come from. And you don't realize how many people are just being left behind and absolutely just ate up in this system we are in. Okay. And, and I know people, they want to defend those billionaires, boy. And it's like, look, kudos to them for gaming the system. Kudos for them for not staying in the shadows anymore, I guess. Their plan is working. You know, they have now, I mean, they've made it to the presidency. They run Congress. They run all... Uh, you know, the, the feds, all multimillionaires. I mean, hey, I, I forgot the stat I, I throw in the Discord. There's 80% of Congress is millionaires. 1% are millionaires in this country, though. Ain't that crazy? So 80% of millionaires in Congress, 1% of the whole U.S. population. So we are high. You know, most normal people are really represented, Barry, let me tell you. But they have literally fooled people and brainwashed people into thinking that billionaires are going to look out for us and, and make sure we're, everybody else is okay and they're going to uplift us. So it's going to happen. They're going to uplift us. You know, it's like, oh boy. Anyway, again, I can go do an hour video on this because I, I mean, I did a speech on this in college, 30 minute speech, and I learned a lot of stuff. They'll open your eyes. Okay. And that's really what this channel is about, whether you like it or not. Uh, but anyway, I'll stop that, get off my soapbox and, and go on into uh, the market. And look, today was a complete sell off across the board. I mean, you can see right here, every sector completely sold off. In the members video I even showed, I was trying to look for if, you know, big money is going into defensive stocks or whatever. Didn't see anything like that at all. Like every sector it was heading down over the last five days, even utilities, healthcare, you know, the ones that are considered defensive. And so you didn't get anything out of that. But if you look here, you know, the SPY, what we talk about, I put this trend line in this morning, whatever, when I woke up because we had bounced many times off of it. We actually did bounce right there. We got a little support. Again, the trend line coming down, though, we'd had there for the last, I don't know, two months, uh, ended up being resistant. So we got rejected off that one, if you look at the short-term time frame here. And then we go over here. This is, you know, what I was talking about when I said you got to watch 434. 434 breaks is it, going to be really bad, and 434 broke. Once we got rejected off that trend line, we were right back down. And so, you know, the question is, are we coming down right here to this trend, this, you know, bottom of this channel, this long-term channel right here? It's, it's looking that way. Again, you can get short-term bounces, but it looks like we're heading that way for sure. Now, again, in this market, who the hell knows? But anyway, IWM, again, this head and shoulders playing out. It broke the neckline this morning. I remember yesterday I was saying, I don't know what's holding this thing up. Well, obviously nothing now. So it took a nice gap down. You know, no momentum to this, this index at all right here. Uh, or IWM is actually ETF. But uh, you know, you look at this, I'm going to draw this and now we got a gap above, you know, the power of the gap. So now we got two gaps above here, oversold on the RSI down there on the hourly. So maybe it finally gets itself a bounce. 
uh, we'll have to see. And it got to bounce right when it got down to the gap below down there, which sometimes you see that happen. But, it, you know, is that gap going to fill? I will be stunned if within the next week at least, maybe two, we don't go down and fill that. Now, Tesla, you can see I want to put the 50 on here because the 50 moving average is what held it up today. That's what, if you wonder why it stopped there halfway in this gap, that is why it did fill the gap halfway, which is good. Uh, and so I'll take that gap halfway down and then it left another gap above because remember gap downs tend to fill more than gap ups. And so when we bring this down, uh, we'll get rid of that. So we get half that gap to fill. We'll put this gap right here. And to me, it, what I'm hoping happens is I really hope it goes ahead and moves down and gets rid of the gap below. I think it would be good. Get some good support there before it uh, takes off for that bounce right there. Uh, or again, I mean, could this continue to go lower? Absolutely. If the market continues to melt down for sure, I'm going to keep these trend lines in place because they will now be resistance. They were support. Now they're going to be resistance, just like I showed you on the spy chart. This one goes, uh, you know, decently far back. All these are short term trend lines, by the way, but they will absolutely be resistance now. So we'll have to see again. It, it's going to go how the market goes. Tesla was doing its own thing. Uh, but now it is showing weakness. So I do hope we get this gap fill. You can see there's some support there before you get a bounce. And this bounce, ain't, if it goes all the way up that main trend line where it's been rejected like four times in the last two years, it's really only 11%. So for Tesla, that's, I mean, that's really nothing. But we'll have to see uh, if the call volume starts running there. We get some crazy news. It's going to push it up. Now, Amazon, again, uh, you saw a lot of gap downs today, obviously. So this one gap down. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that trend line because that's garbage now. I'll keep the other one. That's right where the 50 is, but that will be resistance now going forward, at least in the short term, as you can see. Hundreds right down there below it. Got some support around between 129, 128 right in there. So we'll see if we maybe can get a bounce to move back up, get a bounce off that 100. Yeah, and you look at the RSI, you look at the MACD, you can see that momentum is, is gone, right? And we talked about this. Well, I'll show you that little thing about the Grim Reaper. Well, definitely Amazon was the one that came for first, but it also came for Google, as we saw, right? Now, when you look at AMD, and I said this, I don't know how many weeks I've been saying this one, but I said if we break 102, we're going to 97, right? The volume, you see that volume gap, that volume profile to the right. That, that's why I thought that. And so what magic. And so that's where we end up going like 96.75, I think, uh, as I've, I'm recording this. I am going to take this trend line right here, move it on out. That can be support right there. You got the 200 coming up as well to meet it. So you got a little confluence there. So we'll see if this one right here gets some kind of bid right there at that level. If that does not hit, you're going to see between 89 and $90 right there as your next level. So just keep that in mind right there. And if we zoom out here, you can see, I mean, that's pretty much where it tried to find support today. It was right around that trend line right there. If we break down to that, we do have the 200. You would think it would bounce to the 200. But again, as I, I talked about in the beginning, is this a capitulation moment for the market or not? That's really the big thing you're looking at. Now, I will say Disney, Netflix, Warner Brothers got some good news today. That's why you saw Netflix pop for a minute, Disney pop. Maybe the strike is over for the writers. Disney also come out and finally say what a lot of people want to hear, I know for sure, is they'll stop, they'll quiet the noise and the culture wars. I'm not going to go into detail, but we know what they've been doing with the movies, okay? And it's upset a lot of people. Also, yesterday, you saw Bank of America, they lowered their price target from 135 to 110. Rosenblatt made me laugh. They literally lowered their price target by a dollar. That, that's ridiculously dumb. Now, to understand, take a picture out of Disney. Cause some of you guys said, what do you mean? You know, this is not even really a stage one yet. It's because when you look at this, there's a 30-week moving average. This is a weekly chart. You want to see a stock start to base out to build a base. You can see this thing right here is still in like a long-term downtrend at this point in time, right? You're still seeing lower and lows and stuff. And, you know, if you look, where am I getting this from in our Discord under, you know, share stock resources, if you happen to be a member, it's in there. But this is what you're talking about. This is how you go from stage two is when we're running up and everybody's happy as can be. Stage three, we start to flatten out. And then stage four is the crash, right? And then we go into stage one, as you can see, that's a 30-week moving average on this one right here. And so that's what you want to see in Disney. And when you go to PayPal, it's really the same thing. Obviously, PayPal had a terrible day today. All the fintechs did. They, they just got destroyed today. You can see right there the MACD bearish cross right there on the hourly right there. It's already below the zero line, which is not good to begin with. The RSI is well below uh, the 50 line. So, again, no momentum in this one whatsoever. But, again, like I said, if it's a stock you love, hey, you're getting to accumulate. I know people that are DCA and N. 
and, and, and good for you if that's your belief. And I say go for it, right? It's all up to you. Now, this is another one. This is the weekly chart. There's a 30-week. What do you see? That That is absolutely still in a downtrend. There's, there's no basing out to that whatsoever. I guess you can, if you want to call it a range, that's fine, but I don't really see that. Again, you see a good support level, right? But if you see a lot of other stocks you can pull up, you'll see weeks of it just consolidating in one range, right? Trying to come up here, and this is what I'm talking about. This is You want to see it in a range, right? They actually say this is definitely a bottom that's hit like four or five times, and we're good to go. But you want to see it come up, hit uh, t retest the 30-week, and then bounce from there, okay? This takes weeks to... To, to make it out and, and actually happen. So hopefully that helps. Now, Palantir, like I said, pick your poison, head and shoulders. It's still not through that neckline yet. Okay, so keep that in mind. But what is happening today? It did break this bearish pennant. There it is right there when it gapped down right there. Uh, and so, you know, we'll see if this plays out for the target of 10 to 12 bucks, somewhere in there. Uh, or we'll see if dip buyers just come in. Now, Bob, of course, I'm gonna remove that trend line because you know, this thing's a hot mess. And, you know, when you look at this, honestly, I was there to say, if anything, this really is obviously in a short term uh, downward wedge right now, just wedging down here. Usually what would happen is you see this up, down, up, down, it will break to the top. And so we'll keep this there and see if that's what happens. And it's not just Baba. I mean, it's just Chinese stocks all in general. I mean, look at all these stocks. You know, they're all negative. They've been negative for two days and stuff. And so, again, China's still a hot mess. The real estate market's still dragging them down. And people just don't have trust right now. Maybe they'll start flowing back in, but I've showed you the outflows and everything else. Now, when it comes to earnings, there's nothing going on. Economic data, you're going to have a lot of stuff around 945. S&P, global composite PMI, manufacturing, uh, global services PMI, which a lot of people would definitely listen to. And so could that shift market sentiment tomorrow? Absolutely. So we'll open up, and then at 945, you're going to have all that data hit. So... Be careful first 15 minutes because uh, you know what news can do. We've seen it many, many times. And, you know, Friday's a weird one because you can get a move in either direction big time because the volume is going to be lower, right? So if the majority of the low volume wants to go up, it's going to go up. Or wants to go down, it's going to keep pushing us down. So, you know, let me know in the comments what you think for going down to that trend on S&P. And that's where we're going to stop. Um, but as like I told the members in the video, a lot of the big boys, right? When 10% or 10 companies make up 30% of the S&P, almost 45% of the Qs, when the generals started getting taken out back and, and shot, you know, or beat up, you know, that's why the market goes down pretty fast like it is. That's, that's all the other stocks don't even really matter. It's just those those main big stocks right there. 10-year yields, obviously up. I forgot to talk about that in the beginning, but it was breaking out today. And so we'll see if that continues because that is, for those who don't know, yields go up. The, the tech stocks come down. That's how it works. If it reverses back down, you'll see tech stock start to recover. And the other question is like, it's just, just it's just, just a setup, right? It's just, just a liquidity grab down to set us up for the fourth quarter. Is that what this is about? Because remember, they hedge funds don't like paying, you know, higher prices either, right? So, you know, it's a good opportunity to push it on down before the, the end of the year push. So we'll see. Let me know what you think in the bottom, guys, anyway. I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how Friday ends and stuff. Please hit that like and subscribe button. I appreciate all you guys that have been watching and all your support and the sharing of the videos and everything. Feel free to try the membership out if you want to. Seven day free trial and everything. So that's it. Hope you guys have a good night and I will see you tomorrow.